And now we have Aaron Lavelle from Northern Spark. Give it up. <laughs> I'm last. This is the grand finale right now. <laughs> I am Erin Lavelle. I am an interdisciplinary artist. I mostly work in public art, and I'm also a producer. Um, fun fact that you can't find while Googling me is that I'm in grad school right now, and I'm in my final semester. I'm working on my portfolio, which is an artistic way of saying my thesis. And a big component of that portfolio is the ethics of art making. And that, of course, includes environmental ethics. So I'm here today to talk about the Northern Spark Festival. There it is. Um, the Northern Spark Festival is an annual public art festival. I've participated as a volunteer, as an artist, and for the last two years as a producer. And it happens, it begins when the sun goes down and ends when the sun comes up. And it attracts up to 50,000 people over the course of that night. So it's really huge. Um, this past June, we made a commitment to the theme of climate change. And we asked artists to respond to that theme in their work. And we believe in the power of art as a tool for social and environmental change. And we've taken on this important topic, but we had to ask ourselves, how do we then practically, not just conceptually, produce this festival in a way that responsibly supports our values? That's what it looks like. Um, one could argue that art, specifically temporary art that happens one night only in the context of a festival, is wasteful. And art uses materials. You need that physical stuff. It's critical to creating this expression of the theme. And the material choices matter aesthetically to artists. There are other artists in the room. And I know that the quality of material really matters in terms of what you're trying to convey. But we also have an ethical responsibility to those materials. And so as the producer, I decided to ask the artist to consider materials in a few ways when conceptualizing and then building their projects. First, I asked them to think about the source of their materials. Um, can you repurpose or reuse things? Can you use found objects instead of purchasing everything brand new? The second thing I asked is to think about the choices they had in the materials themselves. So can you select things that just won't end up in the trash? Are they recyclable? Are they reusable? Are they edible? In some cases, the answer was yes. <laughs> and then what is the future of this project? It's one, you're building this specifically for a one night festival, but are you able to mount this project elsewhere in the future? Are you able to use components, small pieces of this project in new ways in the future for your work? Or can you build your project in a way that when you disassemble it, different pieces from it are salvageable and can be reused in other ways? I had these conversations with the artists um, in a variety of contexts. I wanted to make sure that we embedded this messaging every single time we talked to the artists. Because this was a new request above and beyond what they had signed up for when they applied for the festival. So in every large group artist meeting, we brought this up, and that was a great opportunity to um, have artists share with each other how uh, they were solving these problems. Um, we talked about it in site visits, so we would go to the site of the project and discuss, while we're talking about how and where and how big, what is it made of, how are you making these choices, and then the final way we discussed it, which was quite impactful, is that they had to submit production specs, which had to be approved by the festival staff. And one of the questions in their production specs was, how are you responding to this question? And of course, artists then engaged in mostly email, but sometimes phone or in-person conversations um, on that topic. I know I have to wrap it up. I just want to show the three slides of three example projects. 
really briefly. This is wolf and moose. It was made entirely out of salvaged, repurposed, and found materials. This is the illuminated reef, which they had repurposed materials from a previous project and created a brand new work. And this is the wishing well, which the sand and the pavers were um, actually given back to the original vendor and the artist worked out a deal where he would pay for these materials but wanted to make sure they got used in a future landscaping project. Thank you. Thank you.